If you haven't done so yet, please make sure that you pause this video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In order to find the volume of this solid, what we'll do first is graph the three given equations. And so here are the graphs of those three equations, and we've tried to color code them so they stand out. So the curve y equals x cubed is colored in what appears to be an orangish color. So it's this curve right here. We have y equals 1, which is a black color. It's a horizontal line cutting straight across and passing through y equals 1. And then x equals 2 is colored in red, which is a vertical line that passes through x equals 2. And what happens is those three curves create this green shaded region right here. We've also included the axis about which we are going to revolve that shaded region, y equals negative 3, which is a horizontal line passing through y equals negative 3. And it's often helpful, after you make the sketches and fill in the shaded region, to draw a reflection of that shaded region across the line about which you are revolving that shaded region. So we're going to go ahead and take that green shaded region and reflect it over this blue line right here. Now, unfortunately, because of screen space limitations here, I'm not going to be able to draw the full region reflected, but it turns out that that's not truly critical. What matters is this. After you reflect that shaded region over the line about which you are revolving the shaded region, you'll notice in this case that there is some white space or empty space between those two shaded regions right around here. And whenever you have that white space or that empty space between the two shaded regions, then you're going to end up having to use the volume by washers method in order to calculate the volume of this solid. Let's take a look at the equation then for the volume by washers. So here is the volume equation, and it involves something called an outer radius, which we've called R outer, and then an inner radius that we've called R inner. And then we're going to be integrating in this case with respect to x. Now, how do we know we're integrating with respect to x? Well, with washers, that simply depends on the axis of revolution. If the axis of revolution is parallel to the x-axis, or is the x-axis itself, then you're always going to be integrating with respect to x. So if you look at our axis of revolution right here at y equals negative 3, we can see that it is indeed parallel to the x-axis, and therefore we can safely integrate with respect to x. Now, the challenge is to come up with the expressions for the outer radius and the inner radius, and to do that, we're going to zoom in on this portion of the graph. So let's start with the outer radius, and what you want to do is look carefully at the shaded region, and you're going to notice that we have a curve that was defined by y equals x cubed that is located above the other curve that was defined by y equals 1. So what we do is then select a point on that upper curve, and we're going to draw a line from that point to the axis of revolution. Now that's not the x-axis in this case, that's all the way down here at the line y equals negative 3. So we'll draw that line there. And what we'll notice, and this is a little bit tricky, so pay careful attention, that this distance from here to the x-axis would be considered a y distance. Now we call it y because it's measured in an up and down fashion or vertically. And so, of course, the y-axis is also up and down or a vertical axis. So that is y. And notice that y is always measured from the x-axis. We don't go all the way down to this line here. We have to stop at the x-axis and call that y. This distance from the x-axis to the axis of revolution, that distance, hopefully we can see from the diagram, is 3. Now what we want is the total distance of this orange line that we had originally drawn. That total distance will be y plus 3. So that becomes the outer radius. You simply draw a line from the curve all the way to the axis of revolution. It is y plus 3, but we are integrating with respect to x, which means we need our expression in terms of x. Now, luckily for the curve that this orange point is situated on, we know that the y is equal to x cubed. So we can simply replace that y with x cubed, making the outer radius x cubed plus 3. That's what we'll be plugging in right here. 
now we turn to what we call the inner radius and for that we look at the lower curve that bounds the shaded region and the lower curve was this horizontal line right here we put a point on that lower curve and we draw a line from that point all the way to the axis of revolution so that would be this distance right here now looking carefully the distance from that point to the x-axis, once again that distance is y, and then the remaining portion of the distance is once again 3. So the inner radius becomes also y plus 3. However, for that curve, the y was defined to be equal to 1. So in fact, we would need to replace that y with a 1, add it to 3, and indeed we see that the inner radius is actually just 4. So that is what we're going to include for the inner radius here. Now, we'll fill in the rest of the expression. The only thing that we still need are the values of a and b. And these turn out to be the x values, and we're using x values because we're integrating with respect to x. They are the x values where the curves intersect. So this point right here is where the curves intersect, and then this point up here, kind of hard to tell where it is, maybe it's about there, that's the other point where the curves intersect. And we have to find those points. Now this point is rather easy because if we kind of follow this line straight down, we can see that that x value is indeed 2. So we know up here that the x value is going to be 2. Now I'm calling that b because b represents the larger of the two x values where the curves intersect. So this would be the larger one, therefore b equals 2. Over here is the lower x value where the two curves intersect. and that's a little bit hard to read because I've cluttered up the diagram, but we can see that's where the curve y equals x cubed intersects y equals 1. So we can set those two curves equal to each other and then solve for x. If we cube root both sides of this equation, we can see that x is equal to 1. So that would be the x value that they intersect. It's the lower x value, so we could say that a is equal to 1. So we come over in here and we replace a with a 1 and then we replace b with a 2 and that's going to finish off setting up the integral the rest is going to be actually evaluating this integral what we want to do next is go ahead and square out the x cubed plus 3 now of course when we do that we have to be careful to write x cubed plus 3 multiplied by another x cubed plus 3 and then we're gonna have to foil that out over here we have 4 squared so that's just 16 so if we FOIL that out, we're going to end up with x to the 6th plus 6x cubed plus 9 and then minus 16. Now, of course, the 9 and the 16 are like terms, so we can actually back up, combine them to make a minus 7. And now we're ready to actually integrate. So for x to the 6th, of course, what we need to do when we integrate is add 1 to the exponent and then divide by the value of the new exponent. So 6 plus 1 is going to become 7. That makes the new exponent a 7. So there we will have x to the 7th over 7. We will apply the same rule here. So we'll have 6x raised to the 4th power and then divide by 4. And then the integral of 7 with respect to x is 7x. Now we can actually reduce 6 over 4 by dividing the numerator and denominator by 2 to make 3 over 2. And then the next thing to do of course is to plug in the upper limit of integration in for x. And then afterwards we plug in the lower limit in for x and then we subtract those two quantities. So let's set that up. So here is the setup. Make sure that you plug each collection or cluster of terms in parentheses. So when I plugged in the two, I included all of that in a red set of parentheses. And then when I plugged in the one, I included that in a red set of parentheses. And then after you evaluate the first set, and then separately evaluate the second set, then you can subtract them. That's just following order of operations. So when you work that out in your calculator, you should get 471 over 14. And then we still have that factor of pi, so we have to tag that on at the end, and this becomes the correct answer.